I wanted to wrap up. This was a problem, um, is a problem from 7.2. I want to solve a differential equation using Laplace transform. So what we do here, we have a, an equation that has derivatives in it. So we will take the Laplace transform of the entire equation, which includes also taking the Laplace transform of the uh, derivatives. So we take the Laplace transform of the entire equation is equal to the Laplace transform of zero. So since the Laplace transform is linear, then we can we can say the Laplace transform of the equation is equal or the same as the Laplace transform of the parts, um, the sum of those parts. So it's the Laplace transform of y double prime plus five times the Laplace transform of y prime plus four times the Laplace transform of y, and that's equal to zero. So the Laplace transform of y uh, double prime is s squared times y of s minus s times y of zero minus y prime of zero. So that's the first part. Then we go to plus five times brackets. The Laplace transform of y prime is s times y of s minus y of zero plus four times the Laplace transform of y can be just written as um, y of s is equal to zero This part here was the Laplace transform of y double prime. This part was the Laplace transform of y prime. And this, the Laplace transform of y or y of t, we just, just use the short notation. Don't write the t. So let's continue simplifying. This is s squared times y of s minus s times y of 0, but y of 0 is 1. So it's just minus s minus y prime of 0. Well, that's given to be 0 plus 5s times y of s minus 5 times 1 plus 4 times y of s is equal to 0. Let's collect the y of s's together. So y of s brackets s squared plus 5s plus 4. So what I have left is minus s and a minus 5. So I'm just going to add those on both sides. So I get s plus 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms. Yes. We can factor what's in the bracket. So y of s times s plus 4 times s plus 1 is equal to s plus 5. Divide both sides by the s plus 4 and the s plus 1. So we have y of s is equal to s plus 5 all over s plus 4 times s plus 1. Now, on the inverse of y of s would just give us uh, y of t the original function. 
So we take the inverse of both sides. So here we get y of t, what we're searching for is equal to this inverse of the right side. Now to, to break down the right side, we need to use partial fraction decomposition. So we have s plus 5 all over s plus 4 times s plus 1 is equal to a over s plus 4 plus b over s plus 1. Multiply both sides by the LCD, so we end up with s plus 5 is equal to a times s plus 1 plus b times s plus 4. So if we let s equal to negative 1, so we have negative 1 plus 5 is equal to here, b times negative 1 plus 4, the a would go out with the negative 1 plus 1. So this implies that we have 4 is equal to 3b. That is, b is equal to 4 thirds. And then if you let s equal to negative 4, we have negative 4 plus 5 is equal to a times negative 4 plus 1. So that implies that we have 1 is equal to negative 3 times a. That is, a is equal to negative 1 third. So then we get back to what we were solving for, that y of t is equal to this inverse transform of that s plus 5 over s plus 4 times s plus 1. And we broke that down into two um, partial sums. So it's the a over s plus 4, and the a was the negative 1 third over s plus 4 plus the inverse transform of b and the b gave us 4 over 3 all over s plus 1 so y of t is equal to we can bring that negative 1 third in the front and the inverse of 1 over s plus 4 is e to the negative 4t plus 4 thirds times 1 over s plus 1. The inverse of that is e to the negative 1t, or just e to the negative t. Now, 
do you understand what we just did? So we solved a, a differential equation. As a matter of fact, you've seen this equation before. Let's back and look at it. If we have this guy right here, you want to solve that using a previous method. And if you're given those initial conditions, So recall, solve y double prime minus 5 plus and plus, plus 5y prime plus 4y equal to 0, y of 0 is equal to 1, and y prime of 0 is equal to 0. So here, solve this by the method. This came out of chapter four of the method. Chapter four. So this, this is the second order linear differential equation with constant coefficients, right? The first coefficient is one, the second coefficient is five, the third coefficient is four. So when you have that, then we can easily uh, put that into the auxiliary equation. So the auxiliary equation is just m squared plus 5m plus 4 equal to 0 factor. So we have m plus 4 times m plus 1 equal to 0. That implies that we have m is equal to negative 4 and m is equal to negative 1. So we say that our complementary solution is c sub 1 times e to the negative 4t plus c sub 2 times e to the negative t. Back then, I think we used x, so x or t, same thing. So now you got initial conditions. So y of 0, so I have t, I put a 0. So this is, I get c sub 1 plus c sub 2 is equal to 1. And then y prime, let's say first of t, is equal to negative 4 c sub 1 times e to the negative 4t minus c sub 2 times e to the negative t. So we look at y prime of 0. We get negative 4 c sub 1 minus c sub 2 is equal to 0. So that gives me c sub 2 is equal to negative 4 c sub 1. And if that's the case, then I come back and look at this guy. And so I have c sub 1 plus c sub 2. But c sub 2 is negative 4 c sub 1. That's equal to 1. And so negative 3, c sub 1 is equal to 1. c sub 1 is equal to negative 1 third. You see in the Laplace transform, that was built by the partial fraction decomposition force. And if c sub 1 is that, then c sub 2 is negative 4 times c sub 1, or negative 1 third, and we get Four thirds. So you conclude that y of t is equal to the c sub 1, which is the negative 1 third times e to the negative 4t, and then plus c sub 2, which is 4 thirds, times e to the negative t. 
And isn't that the same thing that we got when we used the Laplace transform? Okay. So, so either either way, doesn't matter. Um, you will find out that you can have a complicated problem to solve. You can solve it by a previous method, but it it'll take you a while. Some of the the neat uh, axioms that you'll learn for the Laplace transform will help you break that down and just kind of get the answer in a direct way uh, where you keep everything right there with the, uh, the concepts and the properties of the Laplace transform. Any questions? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's uh, based on uh, the theorem that we gave. That's, that's based on the theorem exactly. If it's y double prime, the form, you know, the theorem says if you're, taking the, the, if you're taking the m derivative of a function, then the Laplace transform of that derivative, if it's the m derivative, is s to the n times y of s minus s to the n minus 1 times y of 0 minus s to the n minus 2. You keep on going down where the, the, the powers of s decrease and then the, the powers of the initial conditions increase. And you, you do that until s goes out. Yeah. So if you see that, this is s squared, s to the first, no more s, you stop there. Right? And then this term here is, is y of 0. The next one going up is y prime of 0. But, but once s goes out, you stop at that term there. Then for the first derivative, is s to the first power times y of s minus s goes out y, y of 0. And then this is no derivative here, so it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. So, and, and all that, that I'm going to give you here and, uh, for what we look at with these models would be uh, the highest one, it would be y double prime.